Okay, I finally got the high sign. Let the festivities begin. Good evening. Welcome to the Council Candidates Forum. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. My name is Vivian Harvey. I'm secretary of the North Glen Senior Organization. This very special event is being hosted by the North Glen Senior Organization as a means of allowing you to hear from the candidates about the issues in the upcoming election. Hopefully, by the end of the evening, you'll be able to make an informed decision about which candidate is going to receive your vote. If you want to get a replay, a video of the event will be available on Channel 8, YouTube, and the city website. If you are not a registered voter yet, voter registration forms are available in the foyer. We will not be collecting them, but you may take one to fill out and then do as it tells you. At the conclusion of the forum, you're invited to get up close and personal with the candidates in a meet and greet session anywhere in the theater or in the mezzanine. To meet your personal needs, the restrooms are located, this is the really important part, <laughs> they're located downstairs, men to the right, women to the left, and also, depending on how we're doing with time and if we start getting long, uh, we may end up taking a break, so just beware. It's now my privilege to introduce our moderator for the evening, Marge Innes. Marge is the first vice president and voter services member of the Adams County League of Women Voters. She has moderated forums such as this in Westminster and Commerce City, and I understand she's got one in Thornton coming up, so this busy lady is out here to help us learn and make good decisions. We're fortunate to have her as our moderator. La ladies and gentlemen, this is Marge Innes. Thank you. I think first of all we'll introduce the council um, candidates who are here. And they're sit seated in the order that they appear on the ballot. And you should have your ballots by now. Um, Ashley, is Ashley here? No. Okay. So Becky. Hi. You could, yeah, raise your hand so I can't see your name tag so and I don't know you. Sorry, so. Becky. Spencer, uh, Spencer Yale, Hello. J. Michael Jaramillo, and if I pronounce your name wrong, That's correct. correct me. Uh, for Ward 3, Catherine Goff, and running, she's running unopposed. Uh, for Ward 4, Luke Lopez, Annalise Kunis, no, Paul Kelly, Mary Mondragon, and Antonio Escobel. Okay. The way this is going to go tonight, we're going to first <clears throat> start with an introduction of a minute and a half, and then, and all of you will get the same amount of time to, you can talk about yourself, you can introduce yourself, you can say whatever you like in the introduction, and then we will have questions that will be um, a minute answer long, uh, an answer about a minute long. And then at the end, we'll have another minute and a half to, for closing remarks, whatever. If something occurs to you while you're speaking or answering something and you think, wow, I'd like to go on with that, maybe you could fit that into your closing remarks or say, vote for me or whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> 
Um, the questions uh, were posed by the senior organization. We also have cards circul out, out there somewhere. And if you have a question, you can raise your ha hand, and there are people who will come and bring you a card, and you can write down a question on the card. So um, the questions mostly came from the, the senior organization and people, citizens of North Glen. Um, let's see, there will be no debating face-to-face. -face. You will just answer the question you have. You're not going to be talking or arguing with anybody else. Um, <clears throat> I think that's all. So our timers are down here in the front. Don Lewis and your city clerk, whose name I can't remember. <laughs> North Glen City Clerk. So they, hmm? Joanna Small. Okay. Um, there's a, the timer on the top of that mechanism. It, that shows the time and it will be counting down. And what, at the end, Don is going to hold up a yellow card. And it's kind of hard to see, but I think you can see it from there. And then when it actually stops, he's going to ha hold up a red card. And if you don't stop then, he'll ring a bell. And that means you better stop. <laughs> Wind it up. <clears throat> OK. Let's get started. Let's start with um, with Becky, and we'll start with your uh, opening remarks and your introduction. Sure, it's always fun to go first. My name is Becky Brown. I'm currently the city council member for Ward 2. Um, my husband and I moved to North Glen in 1995, and when we moved here, my husband said, if this is going to be our city, then you need to volunteer. The kids need to volunteer. We all need to volunteer and really make it our city. So as a family, we started volunteering any way and every way we could in the city. Um, and that kind of fueled my want and need, I guess, to join city council. So four years ago, I ran. My husband was on city council for eight years. So I had a, I had a really good knowledge base to go into. Um, I think that my, my daytime job <laughs> as a project manager and financial analyst really sets me into this role. Um, my annual budget at my job is about 500 million a year. Um, so it, it's a big challenge to keep all these people on task and at budget. I also uh, manage a wide range of employees from India to China and uh, the United Kingdom, along with Canada and America. So um, it sounds fun and exciting, I know, but it's really not. But I think that that kind of um, experience with diversity and large dollars is really a good thing. And you need to understand how those things happen and how overspend happens and how you can handle it. Ooh, yellow flag. Thank you, guys. OK. Spencer. All righty. Howdy, everybody. Uh, my name is Spencer Yale. I've lived in North Glen my whole life. And up until this election, I've never talked to my city council representative. And I think North Glen really deserves someone who will actually m meet their needs and go out and seek them out. Um, I believe I'm the youngest person in this room, unless there's a child in here. Um, oh, just kidding. Not the youngest. Stole that away from me. Um, I don't have any experience in politics, but I don't think majority of the room does either. You know, I think your representative doesn't need to be experienced in public administration, doesn't need to be experienced in former council roles. I think they need to care about what they're doing. And I was either the first or the second candidate to announce. I've been doing this since March. Every single person in War II has at least seen me twice. I don't think any other candidate can say something like that. Um, you know, I, I believe in North Glen, and I believe what we could do but we need someone who will drive that passion and will actually focus on our residents' interests, not the interests of themselves. OK. <clears throat> Jay? Jay? Good evening, everybody. My name is Jay Michael Jaramillo. I've lived here in North Glen since I was born as well. North Glen's been hometown since 1990. I've uh, got my first job here at North Glen in 2008 when I graduated. and. Uh, been serving on the Northland Arts Humanities Foundation since 2016, and I'm achieving my master's degree in public administration, and I'd like to apply everything that I've been learning here in my hometown to uh, 
create public policy that my constituents would like to see change in their community. And I understand the public process of, and the procedure that it takes to make, those, to make that change happen. And I love my, my city here, proud resident, like I said, my whole life. And I can say that tangibly, I would love to um, make sure there is less speeding through our neighborhoods, especially in school zones. I want to make sure that that's the main priority of mine. I want to make sure there are, that our neighborhoods are safe, as well as uh, keeping our neighborhoods beautiful, as well as using the opportunity for Ward 2, our, our land use being used at the uh, Carl's Farm, as well as by the RTD will be utilized diligently. And I also will work with uh, Jim May. He's one of my colleagues. He's the chief of police here in North Glen. And I'll work together to make sure that we have a safer community and I'll work as an artist too to, with the Northland Arts Humanities Foundation to make sure that our city is the most beautiful here in the Northern Front Range. Okay, thank you. Catherine. Uh, good evening. I would, first of all, I wanna thank the um, senior organization, North Glen Senior Organization, and also the League of Women's Voters for doing this, for organizing this. I think we should have more of these kind of public forums and have more communication to our citizens. Uh, my name's Catherine Goff. I uh, lived in North Glen with my husband here for 10 years. Uh, my, I teach, at, or I'm a retired teacher. I have taught in Adams 12 five-star schools for my whole 25-year career. So I've taught in several schools. My last year was at the Studio School, which is here in North Glen. Uh, so I have a lot of experience working with the community uh, and a, a great diversity of students, parents, uh, uh, administrators. Um, and so I feel like that is experience that I can draw on to help me uh, as a city, uh, council, city council member. And I have to admit, I'm really nervous. I've not, I don't think I've ever really used a microphone like this before, so I <laughs> apologize for that. But um, I uh, have noticed changes happening in North Glen, as I'm sure all of you have in the recent years, with uh, urban sprawl coming up and affecting our community and we, uh, the problems that come along with that. So I am... Uh, hoping to represent my ward and really to speak for all of our citizens to keep North Glen safe and beautiful and the city that we all want to live in. Thank you. Okay. Luke. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't know me, I am Luke Lopez, and I'm running to be your city councilman. I grew up here. I spent time at E.B. Rains Park gone swimming at the rec center here, attended North Glen High School. It was here in North Glen where I first became interested in politics. As a young kid in 2008, I was at the Capitol where I had the honor of witnessing Barack Obama speak on the campaign trail. At the time, I didn't know it, and at the time, I sure never thought I'd be up here in just a little over a decade. But at that time, I began my political journey that led me to this stage. During my time in high school, I became the founder and president of the Student Teacher Coalition for the Advancement of Democracy, a nonpartisan organization that promoted the free and open discussion between students and faculty alike concerning the issues of the day. One of those issues which we discussed all too frequently was gun violence. We were kids in school. We were normal, everyday people. Living normal everyday lives, and yet because we were just that normal everyday kids in school, that meant active shooter drills. That meant living in fear for our lives every day. That meant our parents living in fear for our lives every day. One day early in my senior year, while I was sitting in my AP American Government and Politics class, the news came in that 17 children were killed and 17 more wounded somewhere in Parkland, Florida. Okay, maybe you could finish that at the end. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's been my life for the past several years, trying to fight the good fight for all of us and for a generation of young kids that deserve a shot in this world. Today I stand before you because I'm still fighting that good fight, and I want to fight it for you now. Okay. Thank you. Paul Kelly. Hello, my name is Paul Kelly, raised here in North Glen, Westview Elementary, North Huron Junior High School, North Glen High School. Um, I did go to Mizzou, University of Missouri, Columbia, go Tigers. 
Long story short, why did I decide to run for city council? After I left North Glen, I moved around the world. I volunteered my time with quite a few different organizations. I sat on the president's round table for the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. I was part of the Denver Zoological Foundation, the Good Shepherd Teachers Foundation. I gave back to every community I ever lived in. I completed Leadership Denver here in, when I lived in Denver, Anderson, Leadership Anderson when I lived in Anderson. When I moved home to take care of my aging parents, I noticed a lot of things had changed, but some things never did. North Glen was a community I was raised in. We could walk down the street, we, could, we knew our neighbors, our neighbors knew us. We didn't worry about what the neighbors were gonna do, we knew our neighbors. We wanted to know our neighbors. I think North Glen has a lot of opportunity not only for the people who built this fine community, but for the next generation that's going to take it to the next level. Those being Luke and his generation and the young man sitting here in the room too. With that being said, I'm all about the city. Let's just make it better, better for everybody. One voice, one vote. It's all about inclusivity, not diversity. Okay. Mary. Hello, thank you for attending and your interest and consideration is, is important to me. My name is Mary Mondragon. My six brothers and I grew up in the East Denver neighborhood of Congress Park. I met my husband, longtime resident, Northland resident, Monty Mondragon, at UNC in Greeley, and we got married and bought a house at 9950 Lunsford Court in 1980. We raised three kids there and we have seven grandchildren. I work two days a week as a finance and program analyst at the Natural Resource Conservation Service at the Federal Center. I volunteer three mornings a week at Immaculate Heart of Mary's Food Bank, and I sit on the North Glen Parks and Rec Advisory Board. I've been attending city council and board meetings for the last several months to get up to speed by listening, observing, and learning. Our city council must be cohesive and transparent. I decided to run for city council ward four to ensure that your views and your voice are heard. I want to be one of the decision makers who develop the future for our growing diverse community, ensure its alignment with your values and support the vision that you have for the future of you and your family. The average age for North Glen residents is 34, which reflects what's happening all over the Denver metro area. Young families are moving to suburbs like North Glen in search of safe outdoor spaces, inclusive communities, and schools that meet educational needs of their children. I would like to see some positive change and collaboration. We can accomplish great things by working together and forming positive relationships. Your vote will allow me to roll up my sleeves and work hard for you. Okay, thank you. Antonio. Good evening and thank you for hosting this uh, event. Thank you to the North Glen Senior Organizations also. Uh, I am Antonio Esquivel. I'm uh, going to try to skip over the first 50 years of my life and and uh, kind of tell you what I've been doing the last uh, 24 years. But uh, I can't overlook the fact that I'm a United States Army veteran. I served in 1966 to 1974. After uh, leaving the military, I worked as, uh, in, a, in, a, in the private sector. I became a business owner. I had my first elected position in 1995 as a school board member in New Mexico. In 1996, I was appointed by then Governor Gary Johnson as a magistrate judge. And then moving to Colorado, I went to work for Adams 12 Five Star Schools, the school social worker working with at-risk students. In two I retired in 2011. 2013, I signed up for the Citizens Police Academy and I still volunteer there. Uh, I ran for city council in uh, 2015 and was elected and I'm here seeking your vote in this election. Uh, that's probably good enough. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> the next question, I'm going to start with Antonio and I'm gonna go the other way, so. Um, what do you believe is North Glen's biggest issue right now? I think, uh, <clears throat> Balancing our books is probably the biggest issue. I am a fiscal conservative. I like to keep my eye on the money, and uh, we are doing very well paying off our debt in the Justice Center. I hope and believe that we will be able to do the same thing for the Rec Center, 
but uh, that is a big challenge. The next uh, probably biggest challenge is uh, the marketplace. Uh, we need to uh, have the developer there uh, bring in better uh, businesses and uh, of course Carl's Farm. That's a new development for us and we need to keep our eye on that ball because it, uh, if you don't keep your eye on the ball, it, it gets away from you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Mary. Will you repeat the question? Okay, I will. Please. What is North Lawn's biggest issue right now, today? Cities are where we come together to live, work, and play. Providing needed services to people and growing our economy are important concerns for North Glen. The alleviation of crime, keeping community members protected, affordable housing, safe schools, workforce development, clean parks and trails, smooth traffic flow are all key services that need our attention today. The challenge for any small city is the ability to attract, train, and retain city employees. Convincing thinkers and doers to focus on our city is crucial as our future is forged by their actions. Northland must make it easy for entrepreneurs to grow new businesses as economic development is vital for Northland. Innovative ideas, entrepreneurship, and social dynamism drive a healthy and vibrant city. Okay. Paul. Can you repeat the question, please? What is North Glen's biggest issue right now? In my opinion, North Glen's biggest issue is how do we maintain a city that was built 50 years ago by people who had dreams, who had vision, who had entrepreneurial spirit? How do we take this to the next level and pass it on to the next generation for the next 50 years? It's going to be very difficult to accommodate one group or the other. Again, inclusive. How do we accommodate everybody in the city without changing who we are? And how do we attract new businesses that are viable, that are willing to pay taxes, that see value in our city, that appreciate the services that we offer? Thank you. Okay. Luke? For me, I see three major issues in North Glen right now. That's the lack of democracy, the lack of accountability, and the lack of stable infrastructure. I'd like to focus on the first one. Just recently, my mother and I received our ballots in the mail for this election. I'm sure most of you have as well, thanks to the efforts of our city. But let me ask you, how many of you received a ballot to elect a new mayor after Carol Dodge resigned? Go ahead, raise your hands. How many of you received a ballot to elect a new council member after Councilman Escobel took on the role of mayor? I know I didn't. That's because our system under our current charter is broken. It is undemocratic and it is unfair to the amazing citizens of North Glen. I'm a proponent for change to the system because frankly the status quo just isn't cutting it anymore. I believe we should hold special elections if our council members or mayors resign or can no longer hold office, God forbid. I will advocate for runoff elections if a candidate for office fails to secure a majority of the vote in their race, which is something that is increasingly likely in the Ward 4 race considering all of these strong challengers. I believe in demo bringing democracy to your front door wherever and whenever I can. Okay. And if you want that power back, vote for me, because from where I'm standing, it doesn't look like anyone else up here is willing to. Thank you. Okay. Catherine? All right. If I remember the question, it's the biggest issue facing North Glen right now, the one biggest one. Right. And uh, in go talking to me uh, citizens and ward through as I've gone door to door, um, I've heard a lot of different things, but I think they generally fall under the same umbrella um, as uh, um, uncontrolled growth or just urban sprawl is another phrase that I like to use. So homelessness is an aspect of that that I think we've all had to uh, deal with one way or the other wherever we live, not just in Ward 3. Um, and so that is something that uh, I know that the city council has been working on, but I don't think that's a problem that's going to go away, and I think we need to get creative um, on, in our um, approach to it and also to be able to cooperate with other uh, municipalities in Adams County um, to, to kind of pool our resources because this is a big challenge. So that's one of the things that I would certainly be working on. Okay. Jay. I feel the biggest issue here in North Glen is that we are landlocked, and it's been an issue for a while. But uh, it's the greatest opportunity that we have, too, because here in Ward 2, we do have an issue with homelessness here by Webster Lake.
but we also have an opportunity to build some housing that could be more affordable for people to live there um, or possibly uh, I know you've seen it in your neighborhoods too there are people who may be living in RVs or things like that we need to help create opportunities for these people to and to live you know it's it's an issue it's a human rights issue it's something that we need to bring up and that's something that is happening here in our neighbor in our community and I think that's something that could be addressed in Ward 2 where I live and that's at a Carl's farm there needs to be uh, opportunities for those people to have housing as well as uh, the opportunities for economic growth which is everything that's been built here by the uh, by the council that's been here in place such as the uh, recreation center and also the uh, marketplace so those are our opportunities and I'll help capitalize on making this the greatest opportunity for North Glen okay thank you Spencer so I mentioned it in my opening statement but I think the biggest issue North Glen faces is the lack of involvement you know this is a pretty good turnout and this is probably the most people I've ever seen for a city event um, I've been doing this since March I've talked to well over a thousand people 99% of them have never talked to a city council representative, have never talked to a you know, city council candidate before me, and I've never gone to a city meeting. Like That's unacceptable. How are we a democracy if no one's voice is being heard other than the nine council members? You know, like I'd say out of 100 people, one will go to a meeting. And if it's that one person, he's there every week. Okay, and ending up with Becky. Hi, sorry about that. Um, from my perspective, we have several challenges. But one of the biggest challenges we have is our infrastructure, which is our roads, um, all the things that come to the city as we continue to grow. And we have Amazon up the street, we have more growth going in, and I don't know if any of you have ever been down you know, Huron or down Claude Court or any of the streets that are really bad. I think that that's where we have to focus moving forward. We have large trucks coming down Washington, causing road erosion, and it affects our ability to travel throughout the city. So the inf city infrastructure is really important to me and to hold it to task, to make sure that we finish the budget to, um, enhancements to the wastewater plan, to make sure that we look at our roads infrastructure, trying to pull from the budget how we can make this a clean transition and make it happen faster than we would expect it to. So my, my goals are to manage our infrastructure. So you have clean water to drink, safe roads to f drive on, and a great city which we already know we live in. Okay. Okay, this, uh, this time I think we'll start in the middle. <laughs> Just for fun. Uh, we'll start with Catherine. And the question is, what personal skills do you believe you bring to the council that will be beneficial? Almost forgot. Um, well, I have, uh, as I said, I'm a retired teacher, so I've had a lot of experience working with um, people in the community, of a great diversity of people. And uh, is it not working? No, not is loud it? enough? OK, how's that? That's good. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. I have um, worked in school, this District 12 schools in this community for many years, so I have the experience of working with people. Uh, I have also, once I retired, uh, felt like I wanted to give back to this community, so I've done some volunteer work. I was on the Citizens Advisory Panel that helped give input for the design of the new rec center and theater and senior center. Um, so that get, got me involved in seeing some of how the city works and, and how coalitions work and how groups of people can communicate and to solve a problem. I currently serve on the Citizens Affairs Board uh, and so that also gives me some experience in working with the city and um, I guess my time's up so that's it. I, and I'm a good learner so I'm going to work on learning that. Thank you. Okay. I th uh, we'll, go, we'll come this way. Um, so Luke, you're next. Uh, could you repeat yes, the I will. Thank you. What personal skills do you believe you bring to the council that will be beneficial? I believe that one of the big skills that I bring to the council is leadership. As I mentioned in my opening statement, I was the founder and president of the Student Teacher Coalition for the Advancement of Democracy, which is still in existence today. In addition, I was the lead organizer for North Glen High School's student walkout in support of the victims of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. Uh, 
And as well, I am currently a member of the Adams County Visual Arts Commission, which is a commission appointed by the Board of County Commissioners. I believe if they see my qualifications as enough and my leadership skills as enough for the county, I certainly hope that you will see that as well. Thank you very much. Okay. Paul. Yes. I believe I'll bring transparency to the council. In a nutshell, I'm very black and white. <laughs> Either it is or it isn't. Either you did it or you didn't. I, am, I do not believe that any of us on this panel, anybody who's in city government, should be looking to what, what best serves them. I think you need to look at what best serves your entire community. Your community includes everybody from residents, business owners, people who pass through here eroding our roads. Yes, they do. So I think it's something that everybody should really want to participate in. And I'm that one that's going to say yes or no. It is what it is. OK. Mary. So the personal ready? skills that I bring to the table are my energy, my curiousness, and my concerned nature. I've always been out and about in the community. I volunteer. I'm concerned about a job well done. I'm also a rule follower. So when you understand what the rules are and you understand what the goal is, you need to quickly assimilate into a team and get the job done. You need to set, I, I set aside my personal agenda to make sure that we are meeting the needs of whatever stakeholders are involved in this, the current issues. Um, I quickly assimilate into teams. I'm always, I am and I always have been a roll up my sleeves kind of person. So I'll be there for you and I will work with city council to get the job done. And I appreciate again your time and consideration. Thank you. Okay. Antonio. Thank you. Uh, I failed to uh, mention that I also was a member of the planning commission for the city of Northland. So I bring that skill. I think experience matters. I not only have been on council four years, I was elected a councilman, elected mayor pro tem, and filled in in the absence of a mayor. And then appointed unanimously by the council to serve as, a, as mayor. Uh, also, I bring availability. I'm available, and I think that everyone that has ever contacted me in the ward knows that I'm available, and uh, I have a reputation to protect. I, I really believe that. And in the handout or in my brochure, my election brochure, there's a reference to promises kept. I made a promise when I ran, and I kept those promises. Okay. Now we'll go back to um, Jay. Do you want me to repeat the question? Yes, please. Okay. What personal skills do you believe you bring to the council that will be beneficial? Okay, the personal skills that I believe I have is I, I'm a good listener. I listen to what people have to say, and I can act upon it. I understand public policy. I understand how we can create the change that they seek to see. If you look at my brochure, I'll see, it says the vision for the 2020s in the future. Those are tangible uh, components that I can apply and implement here in our community. And I believe that I can make it happen through addressing this, creating the studies, going through the public policies and the procedures to make it happen. And uh, that's what I've learned uh, being a, a community member and understanding how, it's, how everything operates as well as through my education with the University of Colorado, getting my master's in public administration. I'll say that again because I believe I also have the most education here in this forum, so I want to be able to apply that here in my hometown. Sorry, Becky. I know. I'm gonna say, I know you'll say something funny soon too, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Spencer. Um, I think one of my greatest qualities is just compassion. I, th I think every person I talk to knows who I am and knows where I'm coming from. Um, there's someone in this audience tonight that I've been to the city with because she's had issues with them before. Um, I think integrity and uh, transparency is also a big thing for me. If anyone's been following my campaign, all my donations are, have been public since day one. Everything I've ever done has been public since day one. I don't believe secrecy in government is ever a good thing. And obviously hard work. You know, I, Once again, I've been either the first or second candidate to announce, and in Ward 2, 
I was running unopposed for a good two months. And, you know, I think hard work's probably the most important quality for a city representative. If they're not willing to put in the time and the effort to get elected, why would they put in the time and effort to represent you well? Okay. And Becky? I'm going to be really honest with you right now. I think the thing that makes me the best candidate is the fact that I have experience. We've all seen what's happened in our world with people who don't have experience coming in midstream and causing chaos. I think that we have so many big projects coming up in North Glen. Our current budget is over $122 million that we're going to be approving, that you have to have the experience behind it. I'm not naive enough to think that I can do it without knowing anything. I, before I was elected the first time, I sat and I learned and I watched my husband for six years before I determined that I wanted to do this. So I think that my experience, along with the diversity and the amount of things that I do in my real life, and I really have time for the city, as most of you know, um, those things keep me going. And I think that they bring great qualities to you all. I'm at every event you, that we have. I'm volunteering everywhere. I sit on NURA. I've been on the Planning Commission. Um, I'll do any, I'm on the Northland Foundation. And I'll do anything that um, the city wants me to do. I just really love the city, and you need somebody with experience. Okay. <clears throat> now, we're <clears throat> now we're going to do a lightning question, and that just means that you answer yes or no. So we'll start at this end with Antonio. And the question is, are you in favor of Proposition CC on the Colorado ballot? Yes. Okay. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, there was an ask. Are you in favor of Proposition CC on the Colorado ballot? Yes. Yes, I am. How about us? <laughs> yes. Maybe. <laughs> See, I had to do it different. There are too many unknowns to it. So maybe is where I have to sit for okay. right now. All right. Do well. you know what it is? I don't know what it is. I hate paper. <laughs> the, ballot, the ballot issue pamphlets uh, from the Colorado League are outside in the mezzanine. So you can pick one up and study up on it. There's two, two issues on the ballot this fall. <clears throat> okay. We'll start again at the other end um, with... Uh, Let's see, with Becky. And this is the next question. In a city that is surrounded and built out, what does sensible growth look like to you? So that's not a yes, no, right? No. no it's not. <laughs> you know, sensible growth, especially in the city of North Glen, is um, working cohesively with your developers. There are so many things that are out of our control. When you own a piece of land, you own a piece of land. The city can't come in and say, I don't want you to do that, right? You're the landowner, we can guide and we can steer. I think that um, sensible growth is managed through that process, but it's also managed through a budgeting process also. Um, with us being landlocked, with Carl's Dairy, we took initiative to determine and to vote on some really cool things that could be happening over there if the developer plays along with us. It's the same thing at the marketplace if the developer plays along with us. So the theme in the city of North Glen is, if the developer plays along with us, we can do what we want and we can obtain sustainable growth. But we need to look outside the box too. We need to look at things other than big ticket stores and things like that that are gonna bring in tax revenue. We have to be prepared to do different things and behave differently because our world is changing around us. Okay, thank you. Okay, Spencer. So I'm honestly going to agree with mostly what Becky said. I think we don't have a lot of room to grow. I don't think we have a lot of you know, time to really hammer it in. But we do need to focus on quality business, and we need to focus on quality homes and places to live here in North Glen. Um, I will disagree with one thing. We definitely have set the precedent to use eminent domain to take over property that we deem unfit. I think over North Glen's history, we've always had that kind of will do it if it makes money approach, and I don't think that's respectful to our residents. I don't think it's fair to any of our residents who disagree with those kind of decisions. So. Okay. Jay? 
as I mentioned earlier in my first two statements too about the opportunities that we have here in North Glen, I will, I understand business as well. I achieved my uh, bachelor's in business from Metro State University and I do understand business and I do want to be able to attract those businesses here, but I also understand that we have to have uh, help create for the future uh, residents here in North Glen, but also the people that live here. So I see that starting from um, even like what I mentioned in uh, my pamphlet as well is just taking care of our infrastructure as well. Like it's and also getting people to work on time. That if that's putting up lights up in different places where they can't exit. I mean that's a simple that's a simple way just to keep getting people in and out to and from school to work. It's simple things like that. Just getting helping our our people who live here in our neighborhoods, not just people who come in and visit. It's people who live here in the city of North Glen. Okay, Catherine. All right, um, thank you. My idea of sensible growth in North Glen uh, obviously can't be too much uh, geographic growth because we just don't have the land to do that. But there are um, ways that, and maybe many ways that we haven't even imagined yet, that we can grow economically, we can grow um, to be a healthier, um, safer community. And for me, the experience of working on, again, I'm gonna, just gonna refer to that, the. Um, for the plans for the new rec center, are, that is a good example of uh, what I would see a, sens a sensible growth plan where you get input from all the stakeholders and from citizens that are going to be affected and future citizens who will either have the benefit or the disadvantage of whether whatever we decide that we are going to do. And so sensible growth is something that I, I think can happen with the, all of us working together. Okay. In order to create an environment that is conducive to sensible growth, we need responsible building, as has been said by pretty much every candidate on this stage so far. There is limited land which we can use, so we need to use it responsibly and ethically. Second, we need responsible leadership. We need to purge the current toxic environment that exists in our government. We need a community of people that supports each other, and we need a community lifted out of poverty through an ethical government. Thank you. Okay. Paul? Yes. You want me to repeat the question? Please. Okay. <laughs> In a city that is surrounded and built out, what does sensible growth look like to you? while still maintaining quality of life? I think we have two choices here. We can take what is existing and repurpose it, or we can go up, build up, and live in the sky. A hundred years from now, that's probably what's gonna happen pretty much all over the front range. People are gonna go up, they're not gonna go out. Why don't we take what we already have and repurpose it? Take some of these buildings that are struggling, I mean businesses that are struggling, Invite new companies to come in. Bring their campus here. Maybe they only have 50 employees, but that's 50 tax-paying people coming into our community. That's one thing. Second thing, it's all about education. I realize that one of our other council members thinks he's the wisest person. Oh, I'm the most educated. Unfortunately, when you worked for a university for 22 years, your kids are fifth-generation college graduates, unbroken, you know a little bit more about education than just going to school. There's more to it. Okay, Mary. So sensible growth. The number one priority for me would be ensuring our voters have a say in any development effort. North Glen must have a long-term planning approach to complement their annual budget process. A long-term plan should address any fiscal imbalance. And the 2020 capital budget capital projects that I saw are necessary as they focus on needed city maintenance. That's a big deal always. The new rec center, the senior center, the theater has been funded without raising taxes, which is a huge consideration. And that rec center is listed first on the capital projects list. The remaining projects include street maintenance or improvements, water facilities, traffic, and school safety. So when you talk about sensible growth, you have to engage all the voters but also make sure our budget lines up with all these plans. Thank you. Sensible growth, that's the key word, sensible. We need to be sensible in our growth. 
There's two types of growth. We have a population growth and we have economic growth. And we can do a little bit about both. And we don't need to build skyscrapers to do both. We can build senior housing, which we are in the process of doing uh, at Carl's Farm, low-income housing. Uh, we can uh, attract developers, as we've done in the marketplace and Carl's Farm, to bring in revenues for this city so that will grow. The key is sensibility. And I don't want to harp on this, but experience matters. Yes, experience matters. Okay. We're going to try another lightning question, um, starting with Antonio. Um, would you be in favor of a five cent tax on each plastic grocery bag used in North Glen stores? No. I would be in favor of encouraging people to use reusable bags and boxes. But not a five cent tax. Okay. No to the five cent tax. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's start again at, with uh, Becky at the end. And this is the next question. <clears throat> What areas do you consider top priorities for sustaining a, su a successful North Glen future? What areas do you consider top priorities? I'm going to stick with infrastructure, because without a healthy infrastructure, we really can't do anything else. Um, we have to have good water. We have to have good roads. These are things that, that are always at the top of our budgeting. Um, you always have to make sure that we have those things budgeted and that we have the money to cover them. So that's where, that's how, that's what I feel is, oh, I got stuck. <laughs> that, you know, that's what I feel. Okay. Um, honestly, I believe the environment is probably the single most important thing that on everyone's minds, you know. Um, personally, I'd like to see tax incentive, like property tax breaks to people who support green initiatives. So like solar panels, recycling, and these wouldn't be like substantial amounts of money, but it would provide incentives for residents to go green and support our current initiatives because I feel that North Glen City Council has always taken, at least in my time learning from them, has always taken, you know, green approaches to things and I believe we need to support our residents' decisions in that. Please, please, please read up. Uh, okay. Question. What areas do you consider top priorities for sustaining a successful North Glen future? Well, I want to reiterate also infrastructure. That's a big deal. We have an aging infrastructure here in North Glen. We are more than 50 years old, even though we just, uh, since our charter is 50 years old, but we have people here, I'm sure, that have lived here in North Glen since 1963, 1964, whatever year you've lived here. I'm sure that um, you're dealing with issues with the infrastructure in your home and also sewer lines, as you, managed, as you mentioned, Becky, but also our roads, I reiterate that again and again. But that's, that's the main thing, because I know that I've had, we've heard, I've heard issues from many people about their homes and about what's happening there. And I understand that there's being work done on Irma Drive uh, through there with the uh, sewer lines and everything. But I want to make sure that, that our homes will be able to uh, live there for many more years and our families and that's through uh, maintaining the infrastructure that we already have intact. Okay, Sorry. Catherine. Okay. I believe that the future of a successful North Glen is totally dependent on its citizens and citizen involvement in our governance. And when I look around the room here, it's amazing to see all you, and I thank you all for coming, but I would really have liked to see a lot more younger people, um, families, um, we, uh, we have so many uh, people who have moved into North Glen recently. I've seen so many homes for sale and people buying them up right away and moving in. I've seen more people um, with uh, pushing ba baby buggies or strollers, I guess we call them now. <laughs> and I would really uh, like to see more of that kind of involvement. I think that's what our city is going to 
uh, rely on to take us into the future because with your input and your help, we can make the decisions that we need to make about infrastructure, about the, um, the, the state of the roads, and everything else that affects our daily life here in North Glen. Okay. All right, I'm going to try and sort of blend the ideas proposed by Councilmember Brown and Mr. Gale. I believe that the two things that we truly need are the environment and infrastructure. First off, we need to make sure that our roads are in tip-top shape. And we need to do it without a drastic tax increase for the masses. My proposed idea for that is by issuing municipal bonds, thereby negating the effects that a large tax would have on the populace. In addition, we need green building and maintenance standards for all city projects. This is crucial not only so that we can get our buildings up ethically, but so that our environment lasts longer for us and for the generations to come after us. Thank you. Okay, Paul? I'm going to have to agree with everybody on the council, but here's something I want everybody in this room to stop and think about. When Jordan Perlmutter, who basically built North Glen. He was a developer, him and his cousin, Pearl Mac. Sunset Magazine said back in the early 60s, they planned a perfectly planned community. So many other communities were modeled after us. The one thing we didn't do was look to the future because we were already there. What else do we have to do? We should keep thinking and moving forward, never get closed off, be receptive to new ideas. Okay. So top priorities for North Glen, education and workforce development. Our economic success depends on how we support our education system. Building a homegrown, smart workforce to fill the needs of our employers depends on our ability to educate our kids effectively. Housing, the influx of people and high appreciation rate are causing a housing crisis. Crowded roadways, travel must improve, as, improve as it is essential to our economy and protecting the quality of life in our small, beautiful town and engaging independent voters. We get better candidates when we involve all voters to the election process. Okay, Antonio. <clears throat> yes, uh, economic development, economic <coughs> redevelopment, and safe communities are the key <coughs> for me. Uh, this idea of municipal bonds is debt. I don't believe in going in debt or putting the city or my children or grandchildren in debt to repair a street. We can do better than that. We have a general fund. We have money in the general fund. We don't need to create debt to uh, help our infrastructure. We have enough debt on our infrastructure in terms of clean water and sewage. Those are r the most important. If you can't drink from your fountain and you can't flush your toilet, thank you. <laughs> well, this, this next question kind of goes along with this one. Are you in favor of borrowing money to improve the city's infrastructure and capital projects such as new, new facilities? Are you in favor of borrowing money to improve the city's infrastructure? Some of you have talked about the infrastructure needing to be fixed. So, start with you. Yep. No. Okay. No. Live within your means. No. <laughs> yes. No. 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 I was going to say maybe, but no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think uh, it's almost, it's 725, so we'll end and have our final closing remarks. And then after that, I'm going to ask the city council members to be seated in the audience, and then the, the mayoral candidates will come out. So we can do that as quickly and efficiently as possible. Okay, let's start with, I guess, Becky, and you can give your closing remark, Marks. <laughs> I didn't prepare closing remarks, but um, 
my goal is to do another term. You know, in all honesty, I had so much fun in the first four years, and there's so much more work to do that I want to keep doing it. And people will ask me as I'm knocking on the doors, you know, why are you doing this again, Becky? Well, I'm doing it because I absolutely love it. It's crazy. I love volunteering, and I love the city of North Glen. Um, I think that experience does matter, much like Antonio said. Um, I think that my other two candidates, um, I like them both. I really do. It's kind of hard. But I think that I have more, I know that I have more experience. I know that I have more wisdom. I'm pretty close in education with Jay, but maybe not quite there. Um, <laughs> it's funny, they think college was created when they were born. Um, no, it's been there for a while. We've most of us have attended, but um, th that's how I feel about it. You know, I'm going to be here for you, and I'm going to do what you need, just like I do now. Call me in the middle of the night. Tell me about whatever's going on. Come tell me about the possums that are living in the sewer. I'm totally cool with it. You can even show up at lunch or dinner and knock on the door like many of you do um, to tell me what's going on. I'm there for you, and I always will be. Even if I'm not reelected, you need to know that I'm going to be there for you, and I'm also going to be a resident expecting the council to do what they need to do. But please, vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I also didn't prepare a closing statement, but I just wanted to mention every single candidate up here loves this city with all their heart. There's no one up here who's you know, running to change how we live, to change everything about the, you know, why we like North Glen. Everyone is up here because they want to help North Glen. No one's here to harm it. No one's here to change your way of life. But I think our council really does need a change in their formatting and their way they exist. This summer, we lost a mayor due to a toxic relationship. I don't think that's a healthy environment for a government to be. I don't think that's a healthy environment for a city to be. I think we need councilmen and councilwomen who can compromise and work together and be efficient and not you know, conflict to the point that we lose a mayor. Okay. My closing statement is that I love this community. This is the only home I know, and I've had many uh, great experiences here from my first educational experience walking across here, graduating preschool on this same stage. So <laughs> pre-K. Okay. So it's here, and I've learned how to swim in that pool. So, I mean, I love this community. Like, I, I feel like I really need to state that. Like, this is the community that I love. And I will do everything I can to listen to each and every one of you about your concerns to make that change happen and not be afraid to, if, I, if, it's, if it's unpopular, to bring this up to city council and vote yes or no, not just being a yes man or yes woman or no man or whatever, you know. So I'm, I'm definitely going to make sure that I am listening to everybody and and you can contact me as well. I have my email on here. You can email me, feel free, call me, and make sure that you state what you have going on in your, in your neighborhood. Because I've been listening, and I see a lot of opportunities that need to be addressed here in our neighborhood and to make them safer and make it a more desirable place to live. And I just see the opportunities, and I'm ready to get my hands dirty, get out there, and start working for you. Thank you. OK. Sorry. Catherine. All right, yes. First of all, thanks again to all of you for coming and to whoever else gets to, uh, watches this. I, I want your input. I consider myself accessible. I have cards out on the table with my phone number, email, um, all that kind of stuff. Facebook, Twitter, done, done it all. <laughs> but um, so I do want to represent you. I want to speak for you. Um, even though I don't have experience in politics, this is my first foray. Uh, I do consider myself a quick learner. Um, I actually have a PhD through the University of Colorado at Denver. <laughs> and mine is in educational leadership and innovation. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying that I do feel like I can learn um, all these things that people have talked about that, I, that maybe I don't know that much about, and, and maybe you don't know that much about the um, and how to run a city. I feel confident that I can learn to do that. Um, I am also quite capable, uh, and I think consider myself having the skill of listening to all kinds of people at all levels of interest and background uh, and being able to speak for them in different situations. 
um, and I hope that I am able to do that. I was a computer lab teacher, and I, would, I had lots of experience helping people figure out how to get their computer to do something or not do something. <laughs> and um, so I feel like that's a skill that I can bring forward, and I do hope to represent my board with um, competence and pride. Thank you. Okay. Luke. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank you all for coming out, listening to us jibber-jabber at you for, uh, what is it, an hour? <laughs> Anyways, I believe in democracy. I believe in hearing from you. And what that means is runoff elections and special elections when things go wrong in this city. That I believe in accountability, creating an ethical government. As Mr. Yale brought up, we lost a mayor this year. On the 50th anniversary of our city, we lost a mayor. I believe in sound infrastructure. I believe in environmental policy that ensures a better future for all of us. I believe in an end to homelessness in this city. I'm fighting the good fight for you. And if you believe in prosperity, progressivity, friendliness, robustness, and diversity in this city, I ask you to vote for me and I ask you to email me at lukelopezforcouncil at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Okay. My closing remarks. No, I do not have the experience of running a city. My experience was in higher education where I was part of the senior leadership team of a university. So we have residents and we had police forces. We called them security. We had athletes and we had donors. And, you know, it's very similar. But if I'm elected to city council, I realize there will be a ramp up time. It's going to take time to understand where we're going. If it's clearly articulated what needs to be done, then we all have a common goal. If everyone has their own agendas, nothing will work and nothing will get done. Vote for Paul Kelly. What you see is what you get. Thank you. <clears throat> I love this planet. I love my husband, my kids and grandkids, and the North Glen community. I am concerned about all of our future. I want to die in my bed with birds singing and clear blue skies and having paid my IRS bill every year to meet the ever-changing tax codes. So the role of a city councilor is to serve the greater good and not use the platform to meet personal needs. When conflict is avoided, nothing can be resolved. A well-informed, committed group of individuals allows for a strong and focused team and removes the need to win or lose. Common ground helps build understanding, acceptance, and recovery from a difficult situation. Please vote Mondragon for Ward 4. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Antonio. Well, I would <coughs> love to say that I love this city too, but I also love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in what I'm doing. I believe that what I've done over the last four years uh, has made North Glen better. I invite you to take a brochure with you. Look at it at home. If you haven't voted already, vote for me. I'm the best candidate. I have the experience. I don't have to relearn the job. I know the job. I don't have to hit the ground running. I am running. <coughs> uh, promises made, promises kept. I work hard to represent you. <clears throat> I'm all about community service. My whole life has been about volunteering. I listen, I seek solutions, and I move your issues forward. A lot of folks don't understand that the mayor and the council don't run this city. We hire a city manager to run this city. And I know a lot of people might be disappointed by that, but that's the way as cities are run, not just in North Glen, but throughout the country. We hire a city manager to do the job, and right now, she's doing an excellent job. Trust me. Okay. Let's give these folks a round of applause. Okay, if you would pick up your things and... I don't know which way that you want them to go down. This over to that end? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.